Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin wallet, blockchain, stablecoins, Metanet, the evolution of money. Everybody is talking about Bitcoin today. But what exactly is it? Learn the basics from experts. Learn what Bitcoin is, how it works, and why it matters. Bitcoin 101, your ultimate guide to the fundamentals of blockchain. Hello and welcome back to the show. Today we have Zhao Wei Lu. I hope I'm saying that right. Yes, it uh, is. Joining right. us today, Zhao Wei, welcome to the show. Um, I kind of wanted to get us started uh, a little bit today with like a brief introductory about your backgrounds and uh, how you got involved in Bitcoin. Hi. Uh, yeah, for me, uh, I was just like a tech guy, you know, for the, you know, for my whole career. So basically uh, at the beginning, I did my PhD in computer science. So that's why I found about, uh, I was doing some networking related uh, research. And then after that, I, I joined Facebook as a research scientist. So I work at the uh, so-called connectivity lab. So it's almost like, a, you know, Google X type of a research kind of facility. So trying to, you know, they are trying to doing, you can think about the uh, Wi-Fi, but it's not for like a household, but for the entire city. So um, we are doing some kind of a deployment in San Jose, I think Philippines and India. And then I think it might, you know, it's just kind of a nerd thing. You, you can always, you always, because in a valley, right? So always look at what's happening. And then you just find this crypto thing is kind of interesting because um, some of my friends, they're mining some kind of like altcoin. And we're just, just playing with some kind of small tech, just building something like in our spare time. And then I feel, at one point, I'm like feeling more and more time I'm spending this on my day job. So that's why I decided to, you know, just went ahead and just, just left Facebook to start my own thing. So since then, that's 2017. So that's about five years ago. So being there, I've been to all kinds of other blockchains first, of course, Ethereum, and then EOS. EOS, that's kind of like the Ethereum killer, you know, everybody's talking about. Kind of like a Sonata or whatever the latest thing is. So I've been through all these kind of hundreds of blockchains. So been playing with them and uh, and just tinker with them. But then as soon as you like, you know, really play with them, you kind of find out, okay, you know, actually none of them is actually going to work as they advertise. But you, you guys almost always find out the hard way by actually using it. Right? As soon as you use it, that's not good. And then I was uh, always, you know, because uh, 2017, that's also the big Bitcoin scaling debate, right? I kind of follow that a little bit, but the, you know, for me, I'm a, I just talk about, I, I work in the networking, you know, infrastructure for Facebook, right? So that's like a, you know, multi billions of users. And we're always talking about, you know, huge data centers, you know, uh, fiber cables, you know, not even gigabytes, terabytes, or even petabytes per second kind of traffic. So that's almost the, the never like small blocker never made sense to me. And then I was just finding out, hey, if if there's big blocks, just it's just very natural to me. I mean, why is not everybody doing that? And then I kind of like did the, you know, the kind of rabbit hole, just go down the rabbit hole and then, you know, you know, research all the history about Bitcoin itself. And then, you know, read all the Satoshi stuff. And then, and just, Quite coincidentally, 2018, I think almost uh, half a year I left uh, Facebook. I, I was just fortunate to have this conference in Hong Kong, invited there. And then, which, uh, you know, Dr. Craig Wright happened also to be there. And then, you know, once you, you know, you, you want to know the, his personal story, you went down the rabbit hole and uh, pretty much then I just dropped everything and then been Bitcoin since, uh, since, since, uh, early 2018 yeah every day all all day so since then very cool and as i understand it weren't you doing the uh the, aren't you doing like the, the the introductory videos with craig Wright uh talking on oh Bitcoin? yeah yeah what is the most like impactful piece of knowledge that you've learned from craig since since doing those videos or even before that oh just you know He's probably the guy I wish I learned most, but uh, if you want to rank them, I think probably definitely, you know, it's uh, pretty much my full-time job wouldn't be possible without his knowledge about, uh, you know, Bitcoin since the beginning, 
you always have the smart contract capability and it's always uh, scalable and also Turing complete, right? So that's a whole, that's a whole premise that uh, Esco is building on because if it's not, doesn't scale or it does not support arbitrary smart contract, yeah, there's no point in me to doing smart contract. That's just one, one example. I think others, uh, tons of other examples just show us, you know, what uh, Bitcoin is really about. It's not about uh, speculation or gambling or all kinds of attacks. It's about, you know, just, uh, you know, casual small payment on the, on the internet, but also, you know, not only you can send just from Alice to Bob, you can also have arbitrary so-called smart contract capability. You know, you can dictate all kinds of, uh, you can say, hey, I have to, you know, uh, receive this before a certain time. So three out of five sign, or even I, I can even have a zero knowledge proof, you know, I can have hash value, you can, anything you can think of. It's, uh, it's uh, truly like um, unbounded. Yeah, speaking of uh, zero knowledge proofs, I, I saw that you had recently written uh, a really cool no uh, article uh, about zero knowledge proof uh, to machine learning. Uh, so I was hoping you could kind of fill us in on the, the basis behind that and, and what the importance of it all is. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, so for people who have been following uh, our project, basically called, uh, for people who have not heard about it, it's called Escript. So basically you can think about is how you do smart contract on, on a regional Bitcoin. So recently, you know, not only you can do it, you know, a zero knowledge proof on top of Bitcoin, but it's, this actually works much better than all kinds of uh, other blockchains such as Ethereum. So for, for, for people who have not heard about zero knowledge proof, basically it's a way to prove, you know, some secret information without disclosing the secret itself. So for example, you could say, hey, if I'm Alice, I'm sending some Bitcoin to, to Bob, you know, how, how am I going to move uh, Alice's Bitcoin? Because you know, it's logging some Bitcoin address, which is almost the thing of a, as a Bitcoin public key. So the only one who, who can move this coin is, has to know the private key. But uh, that's a dilemma, right? I want to prove, you know, I know the pri uh, private key, but I cannot just disclose it because otherwise other people can steal my coins, right? So she does so by like using so-called zero knowledge proof in the form of a, you know, digital signature. So that's just one, you know, one of the most popular type of zero knowledge you can think of. Basically, you use signature to prove you know some private key without disclosing the private key. So usually, uh, zero knowledge is, uh, you can think about this very cutting edge of uh, cryptography. So, and if you want to implement it on some kind of blockchain, it's going to be very sophisticated. It's pretty much, I think it's the most complex or sophisticated smart contract out there. And in general, people when think about Bitcoin, right? It doesn't, you know, associate with, you know, complex smart contract. So the number one reason I want to, at the beginning, I want to implement zero knowledge on Bitcoin is just to say, show, you know, not just saying, but actually demonstrate. Not only you can, you can do it, which I've shown. So basically we implement zero knowledge directly on top of Bitcoin. And not only you can do it, which is the most complex type of smart contract on, on all the blockchains today. Not only, only you can do it, but also the cost is like a fraction of a, you know, of a, 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 the cost on other blockchain. For example, for us, it's just a few cents. I think we can still optimize it, but now it's a few cents. But if you run, let's say Ethereum or, you know, um, whatever other blockchains, it usually can cost you a few dollars or even tens of dollars. Does, does this make sense? It does make sense. So is this very similar to like uh, what Ethereum is calling ZK rollups? Because um, I, I keep hearing about ZK rollups with Ethereum and I'm not sure, really sure of what all that entails. Um, but we're talking about, um, you know, like uh, ZK, um, gosh, now I'm going to get all frazzled. Zero knowledge, ZK. So I, I feel like there's a connectivity there between between these things. Is this kind of like adding uh, what you can already sort of do on Ethereum onto Bitcoin, but uh, making it cheaper and more scalable, that, that sort of thing? Yes, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, your, your sense of this is uh, yeah, it's very uh, precise. Okay. So basically, you, once you have, this is a, just a, it's a tool, right? You think of a zero knowledge as a building block, right? So it's a Lego block. So once you have this Lego block, 
you can build all kinds of things. You know, that's that's impossible before. For example, you talk about you know ZK raw, which is uh you know we have also happened to implement it on Bitcoin. So if you we have an article about just called zero knowledge roll up on top of Bitcoin. So basically, you know, this technology has been held by Ethereum people as the almost like holy grail of scalability for, for them to scale, right? So not only we can do it, you know, once we have the primitive zero knowledge implemented, so we can use this building blocks to build, you know, roll up, which is just one one type of application enabled by zero knowledge, right? And turns out not only you can do roll up on Bitcoin, but as I said earlier, because we are more scalable and the fees is cheaper, it actually works almost like a hundred times better than, you know, the alternatives on Ethereum. And uh, getting back to the, the building blocks or Lego blocks and energy, you know, this is just one type of application, right? You can think of, you can have all kinds of other block, you know, applications that's, you know, it's great. We can pull some of existing applications from other blockchains that cannot scale. But what's more interesting to me is like, we can, because we can scale and uh, we can afford, you know, huge amount of data and computation. So we can have applications that's only possible on, on Bitcoin. I think that's more more exciting to me. And, and uh, what kind of applications do you think could really flourish uh, utilizing these these Lego blocks as you're eloquently putting them? Yeah, I think one, uh, you know, that there are a few types I can think of. One is, you know, zero knowledge, you can think of is a, is a the variety of ways to zero knowledge proof, right? So for example, you know, the the most popular one we call the ZK Snark. So there's just one, you know, think about zero knowledge proof. They have many, many uh, ways to do it. And this ZK Snark is one way. And uh, since ZK Snark, there's a, you know, because it's a cutting edge of cryptography. So that's almost like 10 years ago, that's first introduced. And so so the, all the researchers and developers, they have been proposing a lot of new zero knowledge protocols, you know, but because on Ethereum, it's, uh, you know, it's block is small and fees are high. So they can pretty much support just one or two type of zero knowledge, which is the oldest one. But since then there have been many, you know, improvement, but because they cannot scale and while we can, we can, we can implement all this newer type of zero knowledge, which, you know, in a lot of aspects superior to the old one. So we can just implement today, you know, you, you pretty much just write a script smart contract. That's it. You don't need to, you don't need to ask for my permission or, you know, contact the Bitcoin association or whatnot. You can just, it's any program, right? You can just code it and then you can run it tomorrow, which is, I think this is the only, only blockchain I know that can, you know, support arbitrary type of zero knowledge proof because other blockchains, for example, you know, there's some zero knowledge proof, you know, I don't know how about this term, uh, called bulletproof, right? The bulletproof, you know, because the verification takes a long time. So it's almost impossible to do it on, let's say Ethereum. Or yeah, there are some other newer type of zero knowledge called Stark. So instead of Snark, it's called Stark, but the proof size is like a 100 kilobytes, right? Now you, if, you know, we're in Bitcoin. So when you think about 100 kilobytes, does it sound like too big to, to fit in uh, our box to you or? No, it seems no, 100 small. Kilobytes. Yeah, smallish, but you talk to any other blockchains, 100 kilobytes is pretty much like a, it's a definitely no to them because they think about, you can maybe put a few hundred bytes, but 100 kilobytes is unthinkable. So for example, then you can say, hey, stuck people, you don't have to get stuck on Ethereum. You can come on building on Bitcoin, you know, it's 100 kilobyte proof size, no problem. It's like a, under a fraction or maybe a fraction of a cent right, on, on Bitcoin. So that enables new type of innovation that's impossible anywhere else. You can only do it here. So this is a very good demonstration of the technical superiority of the original Bitcoin. You cannot, it's just don't say, it, but it, you can actually do things here. And only you can, you can only do it here. And that's one type of application I can think of, right? Just using the newer type of uh, zero knowledge on, on Bitcoin. The second is, you know, once you have this Lego block, you can build a lot of uh, applications that's impossible before, right? For example, we talk about some example, let's say uh, the games, right? Okay. So think about 
all the previous games on blockchain because blockchain, right? You know, because it's public and transparent. So if you build games on on, on blockchains before, because everybody can see everything on the blockchain. So you cannot say build some kind of game which only has, let's say, hidden information right? or partial information. Let's say you can play chess or checkers, right? Because you can, I can see your moves, you can see my moves, every, everybody can see everything. But what if we want to play just simple game, poker, right? Think about poker, right? If you and me and somebody else playing poker, uh, I don't know what's in your hand, you probably don't know me and mine, and we don't know what's the deck, right? The mm-hmm. remaining cards. Because if everybody knows all this information, I mean, you can still play, but that's fine. It's not, it's not really poker anyway, right? Or oh, think about all the, you know, most popular games, you know, whatever, either it's a uh, World of Warcraft or Civilization, or, you know, somebody even post, uh, you know, Counter Strike, right? Like, if you know Vinex, they've been playing Counter Strike. So think about Counter Strike. If I know everything about the whole game, right? I know where the enemies are, I know what account, the position, I know who's still there, then it's not as fun, right? But the, 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 the problem that's, here is you have a dilemma. So if you put the game on the blockchain, everybody can see it, but if you don't put it, but then how does the miners enforce it? But mm. So zero knowledge is a, is a piece of cool technology that can solve this dilemma. Basically it says, you know, I can put some kind of uh, information, you know, like usually it's a hash, right? You can hash your position or whatever, put it on the blockchain, and then you can sure the and the smart contract can enforce everybody following the rules right that's a poker right so when you when you place when you show your card it's actually from whatever available in your hand and you are not cheating right because if the, you are not enforcing i can always have the best card i can have right so you got you I can enforce the game rules while you are not showing all the information about the game so this just opens a new it's just a new type of completely different games that's impossible before so that's just one one idea I have. I'm I'm thinking now that you're you're putting it in those terms uh, and laying it out very simply. Uh, I'm I'm thinking about healthcare uh, in particular, being able to put like PHI personal healthcare information uh, on the blockchain because it sounds like uh, utilizing zero knowledge proof. Um, this would facilitate uh, in a way giving back uh, the individuals the ability to hold their own personal healthcare uh, information and records, and then just uh, allowing or giving that key to uh, healthcare providers to update, make changes to those personal records, but you would hold those personal records and just allow uh, healthcare providers access to that information versus the system that we have currently in place, which is, uh, you know, those health pa- healthcare providers currently hold your information and they make changes to it. And then you give them permission to change it around with other healthcare providers. So it sounds like zero knowledge proof. Um, if, if we were to place, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you think about zero knowledge, right, it's, uh, one of the primary use case is just to protect the privacy, you know, because you can show something is true without disclosing the thing itself. So for example, you know, you know, you talk about the healthcare, you know, any kind of like a personal information, sensitive information you can think of, right? For example, you know, you can even say, you know, whenever you go to a bar, I mean, I don't know about you, but sometimes if you go to some place, they still check the ID, you know, just to make sure you're above 21 or something. But ideally, you don't want to, you know, show them the driver license because that shows a lot of like a sensitive person, like a address, you know, all this the driver license. But essentially, the bouncer just want to make sure, you know, you, your age is above 21, the legal drinking gauge, right? Whatever it is in your jur- jurisdiction. So that's the only thing you have actually they care. You don't care about anything else. So with this type of zero knowledge, you can also prove, hey, you know, what if I get some kind of like a credential from the government, but I, I can hide it myself, but I can also, pr- you know, prove to you, I'm, let's say above 21, or uh, my credit score is above you know, I don't know, 600 uh, or 700, you know, when you're applying a loan or you are saying my income is, you know, annual income is above this threshold, but without disclosing all the, the details, because, you know, it can be like your personal 
private information, right? For example, your your salary. I don't know about you, but I don't walk around just telling me people how much I make every year, you know, unless I have to, you know. So this is healthcare information is all another type of data you can protect. Uh, you can just say, hey, for example, another example I think of is you can do, let's say you are applying a loan, right? Or even say you are trying to do kind of like, a, you know, even have they have the DNA sampling data, right? You can just, you know, send to somebody to say, hey, what's my risk of, you know, diabetes in the, in the future, you know? But you, you may want to only send selected pieces of information, right? You don't probably don't want to, you know, send the whole DNA information. So that's just, you know, and there was all kinds of new privacy focused application. And you can build it on, on top of Bitcoin with, you know, the latest uh, building blocks and tools we offer. That sounds amazing. Um, and, you know, in, in the, not only did you release an article talking specifically about zero knowledge proof, as I understand it, you also recently announced uh, something called ZK Battleship, which is the world's first interactive mm -hmm. zero knowledge proof tutorial. Um, so is it a game? Is it a tutorial? Is it both? Uh, can you kind of fill us in on yeah, what's exactly. occurring there? Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm really glad you also follow our work. So thanks. So ZK Battleship is, is a both. You know, it's a it's a game called Battleship, but also it's an interactive tutorial. So I'm I'm kind of a little bit surprised nobody has done this before because you know zero knowledge is this kind of like a esoteric, you know, nerdy kind of topic. And a lot of people they want they are very interested they hear about the buzzword, but it's very hard for them to, you know, especially developers. Hey, I I, I know this seems to be, you know, uh, you know very useful, and uh, you know I want to incorporate this into my application, but where do I start? So that's why we developed develop this ZK Battleship, basically using like a very simple game called Battleship. I don't know, have you played it before or have you I heard about this game before? Child. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So most people, that's how they get to know it. So in a physical Battleship game, right? Because you have something blocking the view from uh, the component, right? So you, when you call, hey, I want to hit this coordinate and your opponent is supposed to be honest and tell you whether it's a hit or miss, right? And, and also, you know, because you are, it's a physical environment, so you cannot see your opponent's position because otherwise that's no fun, right? If you know all the fleet, you can just, you can just fire the missiles into each, each spot. And then there's no, that's no fun playing this game. Right? So it's one of the, you know, good example of a so-called hidden or incomplete information game. So then you can use zero knowledge, you know, once you can say, I commit to this position by hashing the initial position, right? Because you have hash, you are pretty much committed. You cannot change it without, you know, changing the hash. So the hash acts as two purpose. One is, you know, you pretty much, you, you fix the position of a fleet, right? That's one. The second is, you, then later on, you can just hash to say, hey, if you call this position, actually it is a hit or not. I can, I can show you proof I'm not lying because you know, if you're just a hash, if you don't, don't, don't do anything else, how am I, how do I know whether you are lying to me or not? Because, you know, that's no way for me to check. But with zero knowledge, I can produce this proof. And if you check it, it's good. You, you, you are very sure. I'm not lying. Nobody's cheating. So the game can, you know, can, can be faithfully going on. If, even we are not honest, it's, you can still going. So that's the second two. And uh, the we, we put it, you know, not only build this contract part, because that's usually what, when we publish articles, we just release the contract, smart contract. But in this case, because you don't want to people just look at the smart contract, right? But, you know, what are, what are they going to do with it? Nothing, right? So we also build like a web UI front end. It's a website. So basically you can, you can go there, you can actually click around and you can play the game yourself and see, you know, the things, you know, that's been, pretty much in theory only for you for a long time but now not only you can you can build smart contract but you also have the front end and you can interact with it using like a web wallet so that's give people more you know idea how to actually build it yeah that's really cool um 
I, I'm thinking about like all the 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 similarities between like what Ethereum tries to do or says that they're going to do, but it, like actually being able to being capable of doing it on Bitcoin. Um, and and as I understand it, um, uh, well, first of all, I'm really excited to hear that you guys have have this going on and that you've built out a website and everybody to check it out on. But um, if I'm not mistaken, you're the CEO of Script, which is like ethereum's solidity equivalent uh and and i'm curious like what do you mm -hmm. feel like or, or what are the main differences between like ethereum solidity and s script if any <laughs> i think the the language you know the syntax wise is very similar it's all both you know look very familiar if you have a any kind of like a javascript or any kind of other high level programming language background so I think a syntax you can think of as is only at the surface level. I think that's like a, the difference you can think about the marginal. So actually that's one of the design principles. So because we want to be, you know, not only attractive to Bitcoin developers, we want to also appeal to, you know, the the outside of the, you know, developer from outside of Bitcoin. So that's why, you know, from the appearance, it looks similar. And, but what's, under the hood is completely different because you know one is running on Ethereum, which is a account based that's running the so-called Ethereum virtual machine, versus another UTXO based Bitcoin that's running on the so-called Bitcoin virtual machine. So the surface it looks similar, but what's going under the hood is completely different, and that's the number one uh, difference. If you talk about let's say Bitcoin is a UTXO, right? UTXO think about you know it's pretty much they call it cash, right? So think about all the cash bills you can have. If you have a single $1 bill, there's no limit on how fast you can transfer it, right? You can give it Alice to Bob, Bob to Charlie, Charlie to, you know, Doge or whatever. You can just give out, there's no bond, right? Because every dollar is independent of all other dollars. Does this make sense? So what you're saying is this, uh, it helps facilitate like a multi-chain, uh world so to speak with with different currencies not multi-chain i'm, I'm saying it's, um, it's you can you can process they are independent so they can be processed in parallel because one does not affect other if i have a one dollar and five dollar i can give this one dollar to somebody else and give five dollar to some you know to another guy right that's they're not dependent anyway so that means i can process them on different machines right simultaneously doesn't matter how many bills I have. It's, I can always, you know, per process them in parallel. So in, in a computer science technology, terminology, that's called a, still called a horizontal scaling. So basically it is like a, let's say Zoom or Facebook, right? You know, they Facebook have billions of users, but they never have a, like a scaling issue. Right? You know, they can always add more machines. So how, for Facebook to scale, right, you can always just add more machines, build more data centers. There's no, I never heard about they have a scaling limit, right? You probably never heard about it. Or Google or Amazon, right? That's all the big internet companies, how they scale today. And it's proven and it actually works today for billions of users. Versus the Ethereum so-called account model is, you know, you think about Ethereum, they have a so-called, you know, global state, right? Think about the big spreadsheet. So. But the problem is everybody is on this list. So whenever you want to modify this, you just cannot modify it, you know, by two people simultaneously, right? For example, what if I'm sending, uh, let's say I don't have any money, but I want to send to Alice, that's impossible, right? Or five bucks or five ethers. But what if I have another transaction coming in, I'm receive seven, right? So you can only, receive these seven ethers before you can send out five if you're starting from zero right? so that means all this because all any two transactions they can be correlated they can be dependent on that's some dependence so you cannot parallelize them you have to you know it's like you, if you and me we are working together it has we are, to go in you know using order. let's say google doc yes because that's only one copy you cannot otherwise you have conflicts right so that's a fundamentally that's the reason. That's, it's not uh, how much, how many resources, or how how many eighteen months you wait, or how many billions you VCs put into the the ecosystem. It's just the design, 
you know, make sure it's never going to scale because it's almost if, you know, once it's, we have a jet engine, right? We have a, you know, Boeing 7037, uh, you know, you know, it's going to fly it's much faster. You can just keep putting more fuels into it. It's going to fly fast. But if you you can think about it, it's like a car, right? It doesn't matter how much money you throw at it, how many years you wait for its development, it's never going to catch up. It, the, it's the initial design. Let's make sure it's, it can only run on the ground and it's never going to, you know, jump in there. I mean, we're not, let's not, you know, let's not talk about a flying car for years, just in you know, a regular cars, right? It's never going to catch up. So the same here. I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions is uh, because people think, you know, it's just, you know, it's like any other like a product or applications. You can constantly upgrade. So you can have new features, then you can reach your goal. But since you have an initial design that's using this model, so let's say account model, it's only can be horizontally scaled, meaning you can only buy bigger and bigger machine, but you can you cannot scale it by putting more machines. So that means yes, that's that's the only way you can reach true scalability, right? Because even you can reach one thousand transactions per second. But then what if you know another million people join, then you are stuck again, right? For Bitcoin is there's no scaling limit. The only the only scalable platform has to be uncapped, right? It's like a Facebook or Google. You cannot say, oh, oh, I can only support you know this many users. That's not good enough, right? You can pretty much you don't have you cannot have any bound, right? Even Sonala, right? They say, you know, theoretically they can reach you know visa level, you know, sixty five thousand transactions per second. But what if what if you have more users than that? I mean, even I'm even give you the benefit. Of, let's say assume they can reach it today, right? Which they cannot do, right? But even they have the best case scenario, that you are stuck again, right? You cannot scale unbounded. That's so Bitcoin is the only way. It's the only blockchain today. You know, you can. It's like uh, the earliest Satoshi post, right? There's no scaling limit. There's no ceiling. You can you just put more machines into it. It's just, just going to just you can support more transactions. That's it. Yeah, that sounds, I mean, there's a lot to unpack there, but I understood everything that you're saying. Um, and, you know, as, as great as great as everything sounds, um, you know, Bitcoin, Bitcoin being uh, unbounded, uh, completely scalable, Turing complete, all of these things. Um, and then um, I know a lot of developers who will say, hey, I, I worked originally on Ethereum and then I came, I, I reached upper limits uh, that inhibited me from, you know, furthering along a, a project that I was working on because of Ethereum's incapability of scaling. And so I, I went in search of, of other blockchains and found Bitcoin um, uh, to be able to facilitate the ideas that I had. And um, I'm hoping that more developers see that uh, or, or, you know, come to that conclusion as well later on. Um, but we'll see, time will tell. Uh, but there's a lot of, you know, as great as Bitcoin is, uh, some people also have some criticisms of Bitcoin, uh, namely one uh, that has been talked about recently being, uh, uh, let's see here, what is it? The, the back to Genesis problem. And so as mm -hmm. I understand it, uh, you've been working uh, with some of these ZK proofs that you've created to help fix the back to Genesis problem. So I'm curious, for those who may not know, what is the back to Genesis problem and what are you doing to help facilitate that utilizing ZK uh, uh, zero knowledge proofs? So uh, for the gen back to Genesis problem, I think if, uh, the, the cross of the issue is, let's say, because it's UTX is specific to UTXO blockchain. So, so let's say you issue an NFT, right? It, because everything on Bitcoin is in some kind of like a UTXO. So let's say you the U NFT, you know, change hands like a thousand times, right? From Alice to Bob, Bob Sell to Charlie, whatever. And then you have the 1,000th guy. So when you receive it, how do you know it's actually coming from the original issuer? Let's say it's Alice. So the only way for you to be sure, you have two ways, right? One, you go back yourself, you get all these intermediate transactions, 1,000 there. You just check each one step, step. You check 1,000 steps and make sure it does actually coming from Alice, right? So that's one way. The other way, as everybody else is doing today, is you know you pretty much rely on somebody else to tell you, right? You you have to trust somebody else, right? Let's say, you know, this is uh, 
indexer, Oracle, server, whatever you call it, but you have a trusted third party you have to trust to tell you, hey, this is legit or not, right? So using zero knowledge, you know, and specifically this kind of recursive version of zero knowledge, recursive meaning, you know, you are solving the problem by breaking it up into smaller problem. Then you, once you solve the small problem, you merge them to get the, the big problem. So if you use recursive zero knowledge, you can actually solve this problem by, hey, every time you transfer this, let's say this token, NFT, you have to also give a, a proof, this small proof, zero knowledge proof says, it does actually originate from Alice, uh, from this transaction. So if even you are thousands, you are the thousands guy to receive the, or even you are the billions guy to receive this FG, you can check this small proof, which is only a few kilobytes. Uh, let, in less than a second, you can know, sure, hey, this is actually coming from Alice. It's not coming from anywhere else. So this is a very elegant solution that says, you know, address so-called uh, back to the genesis issue. Does, does this uh, make sense to you? Yes, it does. That makes uh, total sense. And so I'm curious okay. with, with all of these things that you're working on, trying to show people about uh, zero knowledge proofs, machine learning, uh, ZK Battleship, um, and, and trying to help implement some of these other ideas utilized in other blockchains on Bitcoin because Bitcoin can do them better. Um, do you think that thinking about Ethereum specifically, do you think long-term ETH making this change to uh, their base protocol with no real value prop will encourage more developers to kind of seek out more scalable solutions in the future, such as BSV to build on? Um, because I, I, I just, I keep looking at them changing from proof of work to proof of stake, um, but they themselves have said it's not really solving any scalability issues and it's not gonna bring mm -hmm. down uh, you know, gas mm -hmm. fees. And so they keep making it about yes. mm -hmm. being more environmentally friendly, but I just, I don't see there being a real reason for it, if that makes sense. So I'm curious if you think uh, developers are going to kind of come to the same conclusion as well and be like, well, why are we making these silly changes um, and, and kind of start seeking out other solutions similar to you and, and other developers? Yes, uh, I think that's the whole point where like, uh work in this space right because we we know this is the ultimately this is the only chain that can you know you can you can support you know arbitrary number of you know transactions and then can onboard the whole world but the problem is you know mm -hmm. ethereum because bitcoin has been kind of like you know some people argue intentionally some argue unintentionally has been broken for for the almost for the past decade or so so it has a late start date. So it's like a, let's say S script, we only start about, you know, two and a half years ago. And uh, Ethereum has a head start, let's say five years or six years ahead of us. So it's a huge networking fact. And uh, that's why in S script, our philosophy is, you know, we try not to argue about the, you know, superiority because, you know, if you go to, you have been in crypto space for a little bit while, you know, everybody thinks their own chain is the best, right? So instead of just arguing, we always just shipping working code and working, you know, product or battleship, right? You don't have to, you know, you don't have to trust me, right? To, you know, I tell you, hey, zero knowledge, you can do it on Bitcoin. You know, in theory, it's all sound, right? Because it's turn complete, but versus seeing and play the action of the game yourself. And then you can also check, you can actually, if you're like a little bit paranoid, you can even, you know, check the transaction and look at yourself if you don't trust, let's say, a block explorer. So you can just trust all the kind of things. So eventually the only, I think the number one way we can attract more people is just to building things that can actually work. It's like any other industry, right? You don't go there, you know, pitch about, you know, superiority of, uh, let's say, iOS or Android, right? You just, you just build apps on it and people use it and, you know, and if some killer apps becoming to come out as only that can prove them to work on Bitcoin, I think it's just naturally just developers. I think most developers, they are not that ideology. Uh, it's about, not about ideology. It is about, you know, building apps, cool apps that can, you know, benefit the users and users. So, so for us, our philosophy is always to ship all the prototypes because we are kind of like working on the infrastructure level. So we want to, you know, you also name a few examples, you know, zero knowledge, machine learning, you know, uh, 
computation outsourcing, you know, AI, all kinds of uh, building blocks. So other developers that can come here or entrepreneurs or, you know, companies, they can leverage this technology, which by the way, it's all free and we're always open source everything we have. Awesome. So you can, you can take this and then just build cool apps on, on top. I think once, you know, there's a couple of killer apps that actually people can build and it has been shown to work, which cannot work anywhere else. I think it's just, I think those are the most important, you know, things we, we, we can bridge the gap because now we are still trying to catch up because we, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, being delayed for almost like 10 years. Right now we are just playing the catch up. That's interesting that you mentioned like AI and stuff. Cause my next question, my next question was going to be, um, what what you plan to uh, or what you hope to to build out in the futures and what type of lego blocks you're hoping to build out to make uh developing on bitcoin easier and so i'm really curious to see what you guys come up with uh because you, you threw out the buzzword ai there so i'm mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm curious to see what you guys do with that specifically uh moving forward um but uh, do you, what aside from the zk battleship uh, do you have planned for like the immediate term and where could people go to find information? Uh, where, what is the website and where can people go find information about not only ZK Battleship, but also about S-Script? Yeah, uh, just everything about us can be found on our homepage. It's a very simple, uh, S-Script.io. So everything you can, uh, everything about us, you can pretty much find it out there. And uh, speaking of, you know, What's coming on the pipeline? So, I, I'm, yeah, I think this has not. It's going to be announced soon. So, because uh, Brittany, I think you you might be on the show, so we can just say it here. So basically, we have a zero knowledge themed focus the hackathon, which is co-hosted by you know Bitcoin Association. I think it's going to be announced in maybe a couple of days, and it's going to happen uh, next month. Next month. So basically, it's a one month long hackathon. And you're going to use all the Lego blocks I just mentioned. Or you can even use uh, things we have not come up with uh, using S script to build all kinds of zero knowledge enabled application on, on Bitcoin. So if you're a developer, definitely watch out for that. We are going to have a lot of, you know, not only the, we have a big prizes, you know, you know, real cash you can earn in, in, in BSV amount, but we also have a number of uh, events, you know, and uh, training sessions. For now, every Friday, if you hang out in our Slack channel, so we, every Friday we have like a study group. That's uh, we learn about zero knowledge technology together. So not not just me giving talks, but also a lot of other people who can share their experience. So I want to for anybody who's interested, every Friday, you know, Pacific time, nine a.m. We are hosting the uh, study group a seminar. We we learn what's the latest things that people have built and uh, what's the latest zero knowledge research coming out. So these are two things, definitely watch out. And, uh, you know, we just talked about a few like blocks, you know, machine learning type of thing. And machine learning is also very interesting. We just recently published a few a series of articles. Number one is, you know, you can not only, I think last year we published the first one, uh, machine learning. So basically you are, we're running this uh, neural network, right? So. We just, instead of running the whole neural network, we almost have just one called perceptron. So that's just a single cell you can almost think of. And instead of just single cell, we have a, a network, so-called deep, you know, deep learning, right? So we can have multiple layers of neurons connecting together. So that's one, sim- uh, one thing we just extended. And this kind of thing is almost like the basic building blocks. If you are talking about any kind of deep learning, so that's definitely, we have shown it, you can actually run it very economically on Bitcoin. I think it's maybe like a, a cent or so if you want to uh, deep learning algorithm to recognize handwritten digits. So basically you write something you know, on the screen, you can tell you which, which digit you can predict. With this, with this model, you can predict which digit it is. So this is almost pretty much like a deep learning one-on-one. So we have that. And we're also showing a few ways because of the zero knowledge, you can combine with machine learning. So because a lot of machine learning, when you have models, right? For example, you have this, uh, as I kind of briefly mentioned earlier, let's say you have this credit card 
more credit score model, right? And it's public because the government wants to say, hey, if you want to apply for this loan, you've got to have this credit, right? So, but I don't want to give all my information, like sex, gender, you know, race, salary, whatnot. You can hide off them, but you can also make sure you actually have this, you can prove to some third party you have this score without disclosing all the sensitive private information, right? Or you can say, hey, this model is private. Let's say it's some kind of, I have this, you know, proprietary model, which I spent billions of dollars research, I got this model, but I don't want to sh share it, but I want other people to prove uh, when I get this score, I'm using this model. So that's another way you can keep it private. So it's a good, very comp good combination if you use want to use you know, machine learning on top of Bitcoin, uh, public blockchain. You can hide the input or the model, but you can still use this model to, to use it for, for prediction, for inference. So that's just a tool. And uh, we also talk about the token, right? Because back when, now you have uh, back to Genesis, you can, uh, we show the NFT version, right? which is the simplest case, but uh, there's nothing stopping you from developers. You know, you can leverage this to build all kinds of other things. For example, you know, fungible token solutions. That's one. And uh, once you have that, you can also, you know, just a countless example, but uh, strongly, if anybody's interested in this, all kind of this uh, latest script development, or just the best way to track us is to follow our blog, which is on Medium. There's a subscribe. You can, every time we have a new article, I think every, I think every week we have at least one article. So sometimes five, sometimes, but at least we have one. So this is, that's the best way to, to know what's the latest and if you, we all, I think so far we have probably more than 100 articles. So it's all free. So if you are any, anyone who's interested in Bitcoin development, definitely check out, you know, if not all of them, just the most, you know, the most popular ones, definitely check them out. Yeah. So that's a lot of things to, to unpack if you, yeah. Uh, hopefully you can put in the show notes. So people, yes. there's probably too, too many things we can cover in this one episode. So. Yeah, no, definitely. I will make sure to get all of the links to everything that uh, he just said down below. Um, but with that being said, uh, shall we? I know we're getting, we're walking up here to the hour mark. So I was curious. Um, so far, I've really enjoyed our conversation. I, it feels like it's gone really, really quick. Um, but I was wondering if you had any closing remarks or statements aside from the ones you just made, or if there's anything specifically that you hope people take away from this episode. Okay, I think uh, I always have this idea. I mean, uh, maybe a little bit controversial. So, so basically, I'm, you know, for Bitcoin to take over, you know, to to be the actually the the dominant chain, and you know, we are Bitcoin Satoshi vision, right? To realize this version, I think uh, vision, we have a lot of ways, right? So I think a lot of people that are pushing, you know, the legal side of things, you know, have the legal court case, which is good. You know, we can also have a lot of people. You know, writing articles or uh, people like uh, Brittany here, you uh, educate, you know, the broader community. That's so we need that. But also need, you know, for, for me, I, I want to push this, you know, to have a more, you know, people building real things so other people can, the, the users can use. I think at the, at the end of the day, you know, even let's say all the other fronts we are winning, right? Let's say we get the Bitcoin name back, we got it listed, and then the price went to flip BTC, right? Everybody now regard this our Bitcoin version as a real Bitcoin. But even that that's the case, right? That's almost like a best case scenario, right? Agree? Have we won yet or not? Uh no, not really, because then we're gonna yeah, have to go. Yeah, me. Yeah, go ahead. Still. So because then we have become the new BTC, right? Because we just have the name, we have the you know all the you know so-called big names or maybe blue chips company are saying they are dominate, but that's nothing to support. Even the rich, let's say fifty thousand k tomorrow, right? But that's not the end because if nothing supported, it was just coming crashing down, right? So I'm um, I'm more focused on you know even given our best case scenario, right? Craig wins all the cases, no argue. Everybody thinks this is Bitcoin, the flip BTC price. You know all the players coming into our space, but still, right? You. I'm just saying, 
even given the best scenario, we want all the court cases. We got the Bitcoin brand name back. Everybody lists us. We, the price went to 50K by tomorrow. We have not won yet. That's just my personal opinion. So at the end of the day, you know, even to support, uh, to realize this version is at the end goal is to have billions of users, right? Like a uh, crack set. As billions of users use it multiple times per day to benefit the real life. So it's like any other kind of technology, internet, mobile, network, machine learning, so-called AI, right? All of them does not succeed because they win some argument or some court case. End of the day, they still have to be part of the application. You know, average, average Joe on the street, they can benefit and they, are, they can use every single day. So that's the only way we can say, hey, actually realize this vision. So for me, that means, you know, you know, we can do it, you know, after we won all the court cases or when we flip the BTC price, or we can, because all we can start doing from today, because anyway, we're going to do it. So why not just starting today? And for, for me, I think it's just personal experience. You know, I used to spend all day long just arguing with people on Twitter or Reddit and whatnot. It's uh, just at the end of the day, I just find it, you know, if you put really working apps out there, I think that's the most effective way to, you know, convince people otherwise, because, you know, to be honest, right, we are in a contrarian position. It's not the most popular position. We think it's the truth. So for the truth to stand now, we need to, to just Show like, by always doing. Uh, doing by showing. Yes, exactly. So that if that's a one call message, yeah, that'd be great. That's the takeaway message for me. Just, you know, ignore the noise, just keep building real things and the action of not just using technology for technology's sake, but from the users, let's say at least, you know, what I'm going to use this technology for, right? So, and, you know, as to me is just one big part will be, hopefully will be a big part of it because, you know, Bitcoin is not only just for regular payment, for micro payment, you can also dictate, you know, all the condition for this payment to, to happen, right? So, you know, you have uh, games, you have AI, machine learning, all kinds of things. But at the end of the day, how is those going to be benefit from the end users? I think that's how we're going to win eventually. I love it. So if that's the way, why not just start doing it today? So it's it's um it's a lot of it's very similar to what I've been talking to, like Patrick Thompson and Jacques Wahab, and and uh, even going back, uh, um, talking about. Uh, uh, wild Sashmo uh, back in July. You know, I, I love that everybody's yeah. kind of yeah. feeling the same vibe, the same energy, like, hey, we just need to like show by doing and, and stop trying to convince people at this point. Um, so I love it. Yeah, yeah I it, watched that episode. Yes. Did you? Did you like it? Yes. I think we just met uh, at Cambrian. We just had. So I uh, then was like, hey, you guys are on. You're on this show, let me check it out. Okay. And then like uh, in a week, you contact me. I'm like, okay, <laughs> perfect timing. So it's just coincidence, I guess. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's funny how the, the universe works in that way. Right. Oh, okay. I love it. Yeah. It works out. So. Perfect. Well, uh, Shahui, uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show, sharing your knowledge with me, uh, talking about uh, zero knowledge proof machinery, um you know the zk battleship and and so much more i really do appreciate your opinions and your thoughts on things um but with that being said i do believe that is going to wrap it up for us today guys do make sure mm -hmm. to hit the like and subscribe button check out the links in the description box below and uh yeah that's gonna be it for today we'll see you next time <laughs> bye-bye uh, all right bitcoin mining bitcoin wallet blockchain stable coins metanet the evolution of money everybody is talking about bitcoin today but what exactly is it learn the basics from experts learn what bitcoin is how it works and why it matters bitcoin 101 your ultimate guide to the fundamentals of blockchain thank you for watching Please make sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment below. Share this video with a friend, and also follow us on Twitter at BritneyBits.